friends welcome to the third lecture on high voltage engineering uh, i would like to go back to you know, some slides which i covered in the second lecture that is the need for high voltages on power system okay. as uh, you all know very well and I did talk about, I would just like to elaborate once again. The three phase systems are most common in the power uh, network, power systems all over the world. They could be six phase system, they could be more phases system, but three phase system has established itself to be the most suitable uh, system for uh, carrying the power, for generating the power, for distribution of the power, for everything. Of course, the levels are different. So, power in a three-phase system, as you can see on the slide, is uh, given by uh, root 3 V line I line cos phi. It is very, very well known uh, equation, but we know that. And we also know that the V phase uh, that is the phase voltage is uh, 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 line voltage divided by root 3. That means between the phase and the ground or better to say between the phase and the neutral. So the line current would be V phase by the impedance. In this case we have taken here Zc. Zc is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So, we are trying to calculate the line current of a transmission line, uh, three phase transmission line. So, that works out to be V line by root 3 uh, into Zc or uh, an impedance. Yeah? Therefore, you can say the three phase power uh, works out to be V line square by Zc cos phi and in ideal, under ideal conditions, you can take, uh, we can assume cos phi is equal to 1 and also the uh, character, characteristic impedance of the transmission lines vary between 250 and 350 ohms. Practically all transmission lines would have characteristic impedance in this, uh, in somewhere in this range. So the line current magnitude uh, would be uh, down if you increase the voltage and uh, uh, and we would very much like to bring down the current because current flow of current in the conductor uh, results into heat losses the direct I square R that's the real power loss and that is the heat losses we would like to minimize in a conductor the real power loss and which converts into heat. So, the as uh, you can understand, the power carried by a three-phase system uh, would be proportional to the square of the voltage and when you increase the voltage, the power handling capability of the system increases considerably. I would like to, uh, um, I would like you to solve an example, let's say if uh, the three phase power is uh, given to be equal to uh, uh, 650, sorry, six hundred and fifty uh, megawatt. Oh, sorry, six hundred. 650 megawatt and uh, V line let's take 22 K, kV that means the generation in a 650 megawatt generator takes place at the line voltage is equal to 22 kV and uh, let's consider cos phi again equal to 1 now Try to calculate the I line. So I line in this case 
would be equal to uh, uh, 650 divided by uh, 22 uh, and we have taken uh, cos phi to be equal to 1 uh, uh, then uh, we have v9 i9 cos phi is 1 so the, this many uh, what kV uh, kilo amperes isn't it this many kilo amperes you calculate this will work out something around um, uh, something uh, uh, oh we have not taken root 3 correct multiplied by root 3 correct this would work out to be something around 20 kilo amperes so can you imagine when you see this 650 megawatt power generator that is a synchronous machine generating power at 22 kV the line current in all the three phases within the machine would be something like 22 kilo amperes and can you imagine here the amount of heat produced by such a large current but still we cannot increase the um, voltage rating at which the power is generated because of the constraints that the insulation provided to the windings has limitations the insulation is tape is a tape insulation and it has uh, it is not as good as extruded insulation in case of transmission in case of power cables or the insulate uh, spring insulators in transmission lines etc where we can uh, use uh, and provide uh, a different kind of insulation uh, to give at uh, insulation at much higher voltage level here there is a limitation so this is a constraint which I wanted to uh, explain it to you so uh, if you see the equipment efficiencies, which we also talked about yesterday, the large generators are uh, having very large generators, transformers, and motors. They have very high electrical efficiency to the tune of 95% and above. And uh, then the efficiency of uh, the fossil fuel, that is the thermal power stations, the energy conversion efficiency will have to be involved here that is limited that has been increased to 40 percent lately it used to be something around 30 percent uh, uh, half a century ago and of course the uh, efficiency of hydropower uh, generators is also uh, hydropower uh, turbine and generator system is also quite very high but very often it is uh, said that the efficiency of power uh, generation and uh, consumption is uh, very low. There, unfortunately, the electrical power theft is included, and that is as uh, that is considered to be a, a loss of power. But theft of power is not the loss of power by designed by the uh, designed for the system by the electrical engineers. So that one should always take into consideration uh, when we talk about the efficiency. The level of voltage also we talked to the um, people have tried to uh, classify medium, high, extra, ultra, uh, etc. And uh, every country has come up with its own um, level of voltage under these categories which I don't agree at all uh, I would say whenever any high voltage level is to be mentioned it the level of voltage should be mentioned because you might have seen at 444 uh, 440 volts power distribution in a building is also considered to be High voltage. There is a sign of danger uh, due to high voltage even for 440 volts. Even 220 volts single phase is a 
is dangerous to the human being. So all these voltages are dangerous and all these voltages are also considered uh, and called by some to be high voltage. So categorizing ultra extra would not be very pop, uh, proper. Rated voltages and uh, frequencies in power uh, system. See, we, we did talk about yesterday. Uh, there we can, uh, I'll come to the um, advantages and disadvantages of 120 and 230 volt uh, power consumption level. And uh, the voltage is like 230 volt, 400 volt, three phase, 3.3 kV is also three phase, 6.6, 6, 11 kV, they are all three phase. Only here, 230 volt is single phase voltage. Uh, the, and all these voltages up to 11 kV are to a great extent industrial consumer voltage. I mean, the power is consumed at this level. In industries, uh, even at uh, 11 kV, power is consumed. But the most common use uh, of the domestic supply of voltage is 230 volt. Even three phase loads in domestic connections are rare. And out of these slowly, 3.3 and 6.6 .6 kV are being phased out in order to rationalize the system. So you can say if you uh, take away the, these voltages here, then 230 volt single phase, 400 volt uh, three phase and 11 kV three phase are commonly used as uh, consumer voltage. But 11 kV voltage system is also a distribution voltage level. Railways have 25 kV. They used to have uh, 1500 volt DC once upon a time, but now uh, practically all over the world, 25 kV single phase power supply is the traction voltage. In Canada, if I'm not mistaken, even five, the rated voltage of the traction system is not 25, it is 50 kV much higher and that is worked out from I mean that is derived 25 kV single phase power supply is derived from uh, two phase 132 kV uh, system or substation uh, a transformer at the substation. The uh, yeah, uh, then if we uh, try to uh, see once again that the I did talk about it uh, uh, about that the generation level voltage are limited in our country to 21.5 kV, you can say 22 kV. And in the world, the highest generation level voltage in a machine is 33 k, which is also not very common. But up to 21.5 kV is a common level of generation voltage. Earlier, the small generators we used to have uh, of 5, 10, and 50 megawatt, you know, they used to have 6.6 .6 kV also. And you do have synchronous generators for domestic use of power, uh, power, so power supply, um, augmented power supply, you can say at 440 volts also. Then the level uh, 11 kV, uh, 33 kV, and 66 kV are the level, voltage level which normally are used for distribution purpose for short distance power 
transmission you can say and uh, uh, the consumer voltage even to a single house these days three phase voltage at 440 volt or 400 volt level is, is given where inside the house it is converted into single phase in different uh, storage this different level of the house different uh, rooms of the house etc so that is the purpose behind uh, uh, giving three phase connection to a house is to be able to distribute the load as evenly as possible and that means it is tried that the system is as far as possible a balanced system which at the level of 440 volts is difficult to be achieved but it is tried to be achieved yeah uh, then uh, let's uh, uh, transmission voltage as I mentioned uh, 132 kV is the typical transmission voltage uh, widely applied for electric traction 220 kV is also commonly used in our country uh, 380 to 400 400 kV voltage uh, is uh, in some countries it is 380 and uh, other it is 400 in India it is 400 kV is very wide network 500 kV we do not have in our country and the 765 800 kV range is also so now it has come up lately AC I am talking about all these are the AC voltages and, trans and these are all transmission voltage high voltage AC transmission voltages and uh, 1000 kV and 1150 kV also we do not have in our country. Even the United States, such a big country and such a large amount of power uh, generation and consumption takes place, has got the highest level of transmission voltage to be 800 kV. 1150 kV, not many lines, they are there in Russia. And uh, 1000 kV was developed in Italy. So, uh, uh, I mean, 800 kV is a quite high voltage which can cater to fairly um, big amount of power transmission and uh, to considerable long distance, in, which is the highest uh, high voltage AC transmission voltage in our country. Besides trans Transmission of power takes place with high voltage DC. It has got an advantage that from one point to the other point, this uh, high voltage DC is utilized because tapping the power in between the uh, length of uh, transmission line is difficult because there would be a inverter station uh, also involved in it which is costly affair so from, from one point to the other the transmission of power can be taken up with high voltage dc which has certain advantages and which also has uh, certain disadvantages or problems which have been overcome lately in our country uh, we started with uh, 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 bipolar uh, 500 kb transmission line and then it has been increased to 800 kV transmission line. Uh, monopolar 250 kV transmission line was started as a uh, as a, a experimental line initially in India. Yeah, let's talk about the frequency also. The frequency uh, that is known what we are talking about is the power frequency in India it is 50 hertz but in uh, some countries like United States and Canada um, and in some Latin American countries it is 60 hertz what is the advantage and disadvantage of uh, having um, 
50 hertz frequency, power frequency as 50 hertz or 60 hertz. You can imagine if the power frequency is 50 hertz, the normal two pole machine would have an RPM of uh, uh, revolution per minute of 3000 RPM. Whereas if the uh, frequency is desired to be 60 hertz, the RPM will have to be increased to 3600 uh, revolution per minute. So this is, uh, that means in every minute, the machine makes 600 more of revolution. That does affect the life of the mechanical parts of the machine. So that is the uh, only disadvantage. In the network or in consumption level, there is not much of a difference between 50 hertz and 60 hertz of uh, frequency. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, we did talk about the uh, rated transmission line voltages and yeah, advantages and disadvantages of uh, 120 versus 230 volt consumer voltage. As I mentioned, 230 volt single phase consumer voltage is most common in the world as also in our country. But there are some countries which have uh, 120 volt rated voltage single phase power consumption level, which is uh, which they may consider it to be safer or which was initially started considering it to be safer, it was safer. But over the time such uh, uh, relays have come up which sends the uh, minimum amount of current going towards the ground that is the fault current and they uh, trip the power supply. So even 220 or 230 volt uh, consumer voltage is as safe as 120 today. But there are certain disadvantages of having uh, 120 uh, volt uh, um, over the 230 volts. You can imagine at 120 volts, double the magnitude of the current is required to deliver the same amount of power because the power is V into I. So if you reduce the voltage to half, you will have to, uh, for the same amount of power, the current would double. So that is one big disadvantage of 120 volt. The uh, current carry, carried by the conductors will be very high in all gadgets, in all distribution uh, uh, network or cabling within the buildings, it, uh, the more area of cross section will have to be given because uh, I square losses, I square R losses, uh, the, I mean the heat losses are proportional to the square of the uh, current in this case. So when the current increases, the heat losses increase. So, but you would like to limit the uh, temperature rise of the conductor because the temperature rise of the conductor has to take care what is the maximum permissible temperature allowed for the insulation provided to the conductor. Uh, for example, uh, up to 70 degrees centigrade for PVC insulation and for uh, polyethylene insulation it is slightly higher. Uh, if it is cross link polyethylene, it would be 90. If it is less, uh, not cross link polyethylene, maybe about 80 uh, degrees centigrade. So, when the current increases and there is a limitation of heat produced or the temperature acquired by the conductor, you will have to increase the cross sectional area of the conductor to, li to limit the power or the real power losses or to limit the temperature rise of the 
conductor for the sake of meeting the, layer, the maximum temperature permissible for the insulation. So this is a, that means when the uh, conductor cross-sectional area is uh, required to be higher, in that case the cost of the whole uh, consumption and distribution uh, of power uh, because of the uh, more copper requirement I mean more cross-sectional area of the uh, conductor of the uh, cable required, the cost will certainly increase. Thus, the consumption of power at 120 volts requires four times more copper to bring down the resistance dumped in the buildings. And compared uh, when it is compared to 230 volts, that means the the uh, cost of uh, house wiring cable, cost of the gadgets which are provided. Uh, thicker conductor will increase and that is a, if you consider total all over the country that becomes a very big economical load you can say. And due to higher magnitude of the currents, a high magnetic field is also uh, produced within the walls uh, I mean, um, because of the cables laid in the walls of the house and the high magnetic field continuously there in a, someone's house or within the buildings is considered not good for health. Yeah, let's talk about this uh, uh, system of uh, neutral versus uh, ground. Uh, in electrical in, uh, distribution network. As you all know that in our country we have a single phase supply, uh, a three pin single phase supply. The topmost uh, uh, topmost uh, point in the in a socket and the left one and on the right one. So this is your phase connection. This is your neutral connection. This is your here you can say neutral connection and this is nothing but the ground connection. This is the ground connection. So uh, this is single phase supply, but the single phase supply comes uh, by a three phase supply. The distribution transformer, this is a, a transformer, a transformer low voltage side. On this side, it may be 11 kV, and th th this side may be, uh, this is uh, say 440 volts this side is 440 volts three phase system both, both, both sides it is three phase system the, the, and only the low voltage side of the transformer is shown in this diagram it has the three phases uh, uh, i i a i b and i uh, o sorry uh, i r are uh, 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 RYB, the red, the R is red, this is uh, Y and this is the B and this is as you see this, these are the uh, central point of a star, this is the neutral wire, this one is, this one is the neutral wire as you can see here. So th there are three conductors. Uh, uh, I R, I B, and R Y. So R Y B is the sequence of the uh, supply. Single phase connection, single phase load connection will would be between any phase wire 
it could be R, it could be Y or B and the neutral wire as shown in this diagram. A three phase load is connected on the right hand side as you can see here this is the three phase load uh, connection. So this constitutes the whole system of four wires isn't it that is R, Y, B and neutral four wire. The role of ground wire is completely different. It is a altogether separate wire laid not connected to the electrical uh, power supply system and this the role of ground wire laid along these four wires is nothing but safety. How does it become safe? Any gadget, the loads could be, uh, for example, this is a gadget, LR, the load at uh, uh, between uh, the uh, phase R and neutral is, uh, uh, the load may have a container always, for example, refrigerator, uh, uh, the fridge of uh, uh, is a load and it is supplied with a single phase power. The body of the uh, uh, refrigerator is metallic and it is it stands on normally on insulated legs. So the, there will always be some charging current as I mentioned in my first lecture in the insulation provided to all the conductors in the load or in the uh, cabling or the wires which are bringing the power. So that charging current will uh, in the uh, load that is refrigerator would go in the to, towards the body the metallic body of the uh, ref refrigerator and it is standing on insulated leg. So it will store that charging current and if you touch that metallic uh, body of the refrigerator you may get sometimes a shock because the charge is stored on metal because which, which is not grounded and it builds up potential so it gives you a shock. For conducting this charging current towards the ground would be the best way to safeguard the gadget and safeguard the touch potential, we call it touch potential. So uh, this ground wire it connects the uh, container of the refrigerator, that is the body of the refrigerator and that way of any other gadget, uh, the, uh, the gadget body is grounded so that the charging current in the uh, of the insulation provided within the system is able to get conducted towards the ground. In case of any insulation failure that will also complete the path and with this way the protection devices the miniature circuit breaker or, uh, or your you know, protective relays will be able to actuate. If the current is not able to flow, flow, the protective devices may not be able to actuate. So uh, normally if there is uh, equal load in R, Y, B phases as we can see it here in all the three phases, if there is e uh, equal load in and the, all the three phases, they are 120 degrees apart. So it works out to be the, uh, and it will lead to zero current in the neutral wire. But in a house wiring system, it is very difficult to have equal loads in all uh, the fa phases at a part given particular time. So there will always be a unbalanced load to the three phase, 
440 volt system and the unbalanced current flows through the neutral uh, conductor which is also continuously running along with the phases and the neutral is connected only at the supply transformer uh, neutral at the the neutral should not be connected to ground anywhere else except at the uh, low voltage side of the power supply transformer. It can be connected here at the load when there is a three phase load. Three phase loads, uh, for example, a three phase motor, induction motor, or anything, would have uh, would have. Uh, a load in all the three phases to be balanced that means equal so it can be connected to the ground here also at the uh, three phase load but the uh, current flowing to the ground from the uh, three phase load which is balanced in all the phases the current would be zero so there is always an option that whether it should be grounded at the load side or not. But whenever it is, it is only applicable for the three phase load. For the single phase load, it should never be grounded anywhere. And the return path should always be taken over the neutral wire. And the ground wire is provided for protection purpose. So this, I hope you can understand. The, now we can call this system to be how many? Three phase wires, one neutral, four, and another fifth wire uh, is the ground. So the uh, domestic power distribution system is three phase, five wire system. And uh, one should understand what is the difference, uh, in, uh, uh, different role of the different wires given here. Yeah. As uh, we can see here, yeah, uh, neutral versus ground in electrical installations, I did uh, talk about. Uh, the role of neutral and the role of ground. Let, let's read it together here on the slide. It's a completely separate grounded conductor. The ground is a completely separate uh, grounded or earth conductor. In a broad sense, it can be said that the role of ground conductor in the power system is for protection. All transmission lines, again, I explained that uh, in which way it protects the, the human being, uh, that the touch potential is, uh, uh, is, is zero uh, because it is continuously, the charging current of the gadget is continuously grounded. We do have ground wires on transmission lines. You might have observed in the high voltage transmission line there is a thin conductor at the topmost position of the transmission line so all transmission lines are provided at the topmost position a ground conductor for protection from lightning strike when the lightning from the sky uh, strikes on the transmission line lightning prefers to strike on metallic conductors so metallic bodies you can say uh, the, and the topmost conductor if it is the ground conductor the lightning would strike on the ground conductor and thus the lightning would not be able to um, come to the phase wires of the transmit line which is very much desirable we learn if it is strikes on the phase wire, how uh, how damage is caused to the whole power system. We learn 
in the coming lectures okay it is simply connected to the ground uh, grounded towers the uh, ground wire and the towers are all grounded which keeps it at ground or zero potential if the width of the arm of the transmission line in certain uh, transmission lines if they are very wide uh, you can uh, uh, you may see instead of one ground conductor on the top there may be two ground conductors in parallel on the uh, topmost position of the transmission line this is, this is a requirement because the zone of protection the area under the protective wire grounded protective wire from lightning is in a triangular shape so that to, uh, to protect all the three phases from lightning to be able to strike on the phase wire you may have to provide instead of one two lightning uh, wires on the top yeah as i mentioned the being at the topmost position the lightning strikes the ground conductor which protects the phase wires below that are at lower height levels yeah when we talk about the uh, what are the electrical insulation and dielectrics used in the power system is a very vast list as you can see it here uh, as i mentioned also earlier that uh, when we talk about the gaseous dielectrics atmosphere atmospheric air is the cheapest and the most widely used electrical dielectric gaseous dielectric then simple nitrogen is also used as gaseous dielectric sulfur hexa hexafluoride sf6 gas and electronegative gas and its mixtures with carbon dioxide and nitrogen are also nowadays very widely used for gas insulated systems gas insulated uh, it started with the gas insulated circuit breakers then it developed into gas insulated um, substations were uh, uh, made and now we have gas insulated transformers also which have come up lately so the uh, gas used there is nothing but sf6 and its mixtures so uh, vacuum as uh, is also uh, one one can consider under the gaseous dielectrics Ga vacuum to the tune of uh, less than 10 to the power of minus 5 tor is an excellent electrical insulator vacuum technology developed and applied for circuit breakers in the last three decades is really phenomenal when we talk about the liquid dielectrics organic liquids are preferred uh, not the synthetic ones because synthetic ones are not very friendly to the human being so we prefer uh, mineral oils uh, mineral insulating oils and there are certain impregnating compound wax based impregnating compounds also used for impregnating the paper insulation to feel the porosity of the, uh, the insulation like uh, paper and then uh, uh, required physical chemical and electrical properties are used for uh, of oils are used and uh, the 
application of mineral insulating oils is most in transformers, there are capacitors, power cables, and circuit breakers also, which operate in, uh, in the um, liquid filled containers. The list of solid dielectrics oh, is really a norm. And we have very, very large number of solid dielectrics. Most widely used today, um, over the time, the uh, uh, number or the type of solid dielectrics used has evolved considerably. The most widely used solid dielectric today is XLP, that is cross linked polyethylene, which is very widely used up to the highest voltage uh, power cables. And it, this material is extruded with the help of extruders uh, on the conductor. Then PVC, which cannot be used for very high voltage uh, power cables, unlike XLP. PVC is used up to for mainly for the low voltage distribution care, the cables uh, network that is up to 440 volts. Ceramic or porcelain is very widely used in transmission line ceramic insulator, glass, rubber, resins, reinforced plastics, polypropylene as tape, impregnated paper, wood, cotton, mica, press boards are very widely used. Press boards uh, also um, the bakelite press boards or perspex, ebonite, teflon. These are the names they, uh, of solid insula insulators which, are, which have their own application with according to their own properties. As I mentioned, XLP for the highest possible uh, voltage level power cables, whereas PVC is limited to, it was limited to 11 kV, but nowadays it is not used. Even for 11 kV, it is limited to 440 volt distribution. Uh, I mean, house wiring cable, you can say house wiring. And uh, another um, solid dielectric that is fiberglass reinforced plastics are nowadays used as the uh, uh, transmission line insulator. The porcelain insulators are being widely replaced by the very light and uh, very easy to handle the fiberglass reinforced plastic uh, uh, insulators uh, are taking over these days in a, a very uh, very vast scale all over the world. Then uh, there are a lot of research work going on with the nanomaterials as insulator and wide application has not yet taken place for nanomaterials, but uh, uh, research work is going on. So I would like to close this third lecture of mine about uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, these lectures, I hope, will provide you a base for understanding the further lectures uh, which will uh, we will be taking one by one. Okay, thank you very much.